moments from here, in some of these Steve Soap have been so kind of honest. I mean, you're kind of thinking with this kind of uh, macho racing driver, kind of, um, you see how he races in touring cars, but actually he came across that he was very open and honest about the struggles behind um, behind the scenes and, and the challenges of being a professional racing driver, which was really sort of quite refreshing to hear, really. Um, but yeah, we've had such a great response with Steve. I mean, obviously, I think the touring car fans have been, you know, come out in force and um, they've really enjoyed listening to him. And of course, the fantastic stories that he would tell, that Steve was telling us, uh, leads on to our kind of next guest. It was, a, it was a, you know, it was an obvious one. It's such a great, uh, great rivalry that's been talked about. So looking forward to this one. Yeah, well, today's guest has broken all sorts of records, but most importantly. Spoken very often a number of questions that we've received from race fans, which probably says all I need to, but I'm not very good at the Who their favourite driver of all time, which chances are sitting with us tonight on virtual studio. Two time BT60 champion, pulled off both those championships pretty much exclusively on two wheels. The man who put the cool in Vauxhall Cavalier who helped to turn British motor racing into a real show. We'd be pleased to know he's as outspoken now as he was when he was ruling the roost in the BTCC. He is John Cullen, and if we had a drum roll, we'd play it. John, thank you so much for joining us. Why on earth were you so keen to tell your story after last week? Oh. <laughs> I did. Anyway, firstly, it's really great to be here, guys, and I'm, I'm pleased to hear that there's still so many people out there with really good memories. They must be really old if they can remember when I was racing. But, is, you know, to, to, to follow on with Steve, you know, it, it was about Steve and I in touring cars, it was about Vauxhall and BMW. And it seemed to be that when I started in 1989 in the touring car championship in the middle last year, I was still up against the BMW to win the championship. And it seemed to carry on like that through the next five, six, seven years. So I was never really very far away from Steve Schoeper or a BMW for that matter. It was great fun. But it started, actually I've got a model here which um, is, is quite appropriate as well as the one behind me there. It started in rallying for you, didn't it? Well, it, well, it actually started way before that. I, I started, I got my first competition license, believe it or not, in 1971. And I started in hill climbs, sprints, nighttime rallies, watercross, rally cross. And the deal was, my old man was a scrutineer. And he, I, I, as a kid, I would get bundled into the car on a Sunday and we'd head off to uh, Westby Flight from or Dune or Ingolston or somewhere to, for him to scrutineer and me to just walk around the paddock and watch as a, I don't know, 13, 14 year old kid. And he would, he would never buy me a go kart never buy me a kart that was it. And he actually took one back as a part of exchange. I remember it was a lot more for him. With a, I think it had a little taco engine, it had a gear lead. And uh, not what you give a sort of 12 year old kid, really. And uh, we could never get it to go. We towed it up and down the main road behind our house in the lowest, with a lowest cantina, of all things, to try to get this thing to go. Never went. So I never had the karting. I had to be 17, really, before I got a license and I could drive to and from. And the deal was, my father would buy the car. And I had to find a money to do it. And at the end of the year, I had to return him his money, or a profit, or preferably both. And, and I thought at the time, what a hard to go beggar. But it turned out it was a really good introduction to motorsport. It meant that I wasn't given it on a plate. I had to work for it. And, and I, I, I remember I did the first sort of new championship, it was the Scottish Open Championship, or a mini. And we towed it behind a van, we slept in the van, and we were up at a place called Rumster, which is about 10 minutes from John Groves, right at the top end of Scotland. And it was in the days when you could have a real group to carry on, and that it was a you know a party on the Sunday night, and we had to come back down on the Monday. And it was the days of the Fourth Road Bridge. I live south of the Bridge. We were north of the Bridge. And you had to pay a fee to come across it. Now the fee, I think, was 50 pence. And we had spent all our money. We did not have 50 pence between us to come back over the bridge. So we had to make a detour on the road to get back home again. And that was kind of how the early part of my motor racing career was. It was about we would race 
the mini one we came, we take it home, we jack it up, put a sunk bag on it, also cross it the following weekend, then maybe rally cross it, then drop it back down, do a sprint. So the point we find at the end of the season was worn out. So really, I've been racing cars off a lot. No Last year was the first year ever since 1971 that I had not sat in a racing car and done something competitive. So, thanks COVID, you bugger my record. Last year, I think. I've actually got the Vectra, I'll come to that in a little bit. The Vectra's down in the garage, down here at home. So because I wasn't looking at doing any races, I would go down at night and sit in the car and just make noises and feel like I was actually doing something like that. You know, the internet's like a map of videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, exactly. Yeah. No, Johnny, originally, from, um, my, so my brother-in-law, um, he's, they have, have a caravan dealership in Fisher. So oh, really? he asked me, did, did you have, to have a garage or your father a garage in Bogside? Is it correct? Yeah, yeah is that yes. correct? Oh, yeah? yeah.